What are the top seven reasons you are not making 100K or more in your Google Ads account per month right now? And it doesn't technically matter which type of business you have. Most likely it's e-commerce if you follow this channel, but technically it applies for everyone. And why can I say something like that, right? So how do I get to those seven uh, different facts? Well, I work with more than 40 businesses right now. So at this moment, right? Whether it's actively managing ads for them or consulting them directly one-on-one -on -one in an ongoing service. And when I look across all these businesses, of course, not to mention all the stuff I did in the past, I think that those seven are the most important facts when it comes to this this block or this this threshold of 100k so some of you guys might be doing way way less than that maybe just 10 20k maybe nothing so far others might already be in the millions but i think all of you guys can take something out of this video here today and this is exactly what i'm aiming for so no matter where you are right now you will take something away from those seven really really important points that i see every single day with all the people i work with in google and spending millions of dollars on this platform now before we get started if you want me to look at your google ads account in a very very quick review but ideally finding the key reason why you're not making more sales or more profits than you are right now make sure to check the link in the description and apply for my quick google ads checkup on there, I will shoot a quick video, tell you what are the main reasons you're not making more money than you are right now. Something that ideally you can implement right away, see an immediate improvement in your business. And of course, that should be a no brainer for you to, to do. So with this being said, let's get started with the video and the seven reasons. And the first reason that you're not making 100K or more with Google Ads right now is that you are only running like one or two or three campaigns, right? Most of the people that I start working with, or most of the people at least that are doing very low volume that I start working with, have a very, very small number of campaigns. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't think of that now as the more campaigns you have, the better your Google Ads account, right? That's obviously not the case. But whenever I see people just having one or two or three campaigns, it's usually like a smart campaign and a normal standard shopping campaign, maybe a brand campaign or a remarketing campaign. There are multiple reasons why that's not really a uh, really good thing to do. First of all, individual campaigns are often net not that crazily scalable with Google. It sounds a little strange and it doesn't make sense to me that much still to this day, but there are sort of limits when it comes to individual campaign uh, scale. Sometimes that may be 10K a month, sometimes 100K a month, right? There, I definitely have campaigns right now that are doing 100K a month and more, but across the board it is usually easier to scale three campaigns to like 50k each as an example than to scale one campaign past 100k it happens but looking across the board across dozens and dozens of accounts it's just less likely that's one reason the second reason is simply that with more campaigns you can get more granular you can test more you can sort of segment your account better there are so many benefits in running a multitude of campaigns, right? More variety, more testing, everything that you should try it out. Normally, as I said, it's not that the more campaigns, the better, but whenever I see an account that has like 10 campaigns with lots of stuff going on, they have thought about it and they have made a structure for themselves and they thought this makes sense to me. They're testing properly and oftentimes the performance there is better overall. Number two, and this is super, super important, is that you're not doing full scale tests in your account. And with full scale tests, I don't mean like just trying a different ad here and there or like trying to change your bidding strategy or something like that. I mean literally doing tests at every single step of the campaign, especially if you have a higher budget. Now, if you just have 10 bucks a day to spend, this doesn't really matter too much because it takes forever to get any sort of statistically significant data. But if you spend like, even like 30 bucks a day or 50 bucks a day at least, right? Or a hundred bucks a day, something like that. You should be testing at least different keywords, ads, and also ideally landing pages. Landing pages is a little critical if you run shopping ads, for example, but it's still possible. But if you run search ads, for example, or if you don't have an e-commerce business, then testing landing pages is super, super critical because a different landing page can make all the difference from 0.5% uh, conversion rate to 3%. Now, if you have a product that's doing very well through shopping, for example, 
why don't you try to redesign the product page to squeeze even more money out of it? It's very unlikely that by changing the bid a little bit or by adding 10 negative keywords, you will see a bigger impact in your sales than by entirely tweaking your landing page. So that's extremely important. And in every step of those campaigns, you should be testing ads, keywords, landing pages, bids, um, the products that you're actually advertising, right? Low margin, high margin, uh, testing product categories, individual products. That's very important because oftentimes clients come to me and they're like, hey, Marco, I've tried these things out. They're not working. What should I do? And then I start running a very complex test, more complex than what I just described here. Yes, of course. But the point is I do it more in depth than them. I really put in sort of the the thought the, the, the thoughts and the work and the creativity also to some degree and of course the experience to run something that gets way more complex then we find something that works we scale it up um, and so on and so forth of course doing that with the minimum possible ad spend to keep things lean and not too expensive right very important stuff Number three is that you don't have an ongoing product testing framework. So I'm sticking to e-commerce here again, but it again applies to pretty much everything. If you, most people do it like that. They run a test campaign or they test some products, something sticks, the product works, they try to scale it, but they're not continuously testing, especially when they get new products on board all the time. So if you have hundreds or thousands of products in your store, or if you're regularly entering new products, you need to have a system in place that regularly tests and filters and finds new winners. Yes, the majority of online stores have a set of products that get all the revenue. And this is normal, right? That you have five products doing 50% or more of the revenue or having 10 products that do 80%. But of course, it doesn't make sense if you have a product that is making tons of sales and you're trying to scale that and scale that, but you're not doing anything else. So you have to always keep a product testing framework that, for example, allows you to test 20 new products a day or 50 or 10 or three, whatever, depending on your budget, depending on your capacity, of course. But you should always continue that on at least sort of low budgets, low bids, because the product may always die out on Google. That's less likely than on Facebook ads. Yes but it can still happen. Plus there might be a limit on how far you can scale a single product. Maybe you have a winner, but you cannot scale it past 20 K a month. And there is no way to do it. This might happen if it's a very sort of niche product, and then you need more tests to scale, uh, to find your products. You need a product testing framework that is doing very, very well. And that is running predictably. Number four, and this is so, so common is that you are a shopping only guy. I see this all the time. People come to me and they are only running shopping ads and for small e-commerce businesses or for like small general stores or people with low budgets. I understand that shopping ads is usually or shopping ads are usually the lowest hanging fruit in e-commerce makes perfect sense. You often have the highest ROI there, but if you, for example, do a lot of sales or if you make a lot of sales in other platform or on other platforms or on Google, or you simply have a very high advertising budget or you run a niche store with all kinds of different products that belong sort of go well with each other, you always have to test more than just shopping. Like I have so many clients where surprisingly search is working better than shopping that if you know, if you knew what all these guys are doing, you, you know, you would understand that it's crazy to just work with shopping ads. Yes, in some business, businesses, only shopping might work. Yes, in some businesses, it's totally stupid to run display ads, for example. But if you are not, you know, if you're in a business where, um, for example, you have a niche store or you have a large uh, ad spend anyway, or you have individual product categories that you can test very well, you need to do more than just shopping. You never know if search would work 10 times better or if even display would work. I have cases where we run $20,000 per day in uh, revenue uh, display campaigns, right? It's totally crazy. Yes, it doesn't work for everyone, but try more things than just shopping all the time. Number five is when you are doing over optimization or when you are like the, I optimize my stuff once a month guy, right? Both of these things are fatal because on the one hand, there are those people that try to optimize everything. They, they see five clicks coming in and they see, oh, I have like three times higher click through rate on desktop than on mobile. So they turn off their desktop, uh, uh, they turn off their mobile um, traffic, right? Or they get one conversion on something and zero on the other. And they think, oh, this thing with one conversion, it should be, it's like crushing it. It's of course totally stupid to 
over optimize and to make changes based on very little data or even if there is enough data make changes too often because Google has to optimize too. From my experience the Google optimization is less sort of sensitive uh, than on Facebook so the Google algorithm with your ads is less sensitive than on Facebook but of course it's still an algorithm an AI system that works behind the scenes and if you don't give it sort of any room to optimize and to improve then it won't improve by itself and you always have to sit there and, and do everything and that way you know that's a recipe for disaster at least give most campaigns a few days before making a change such as bidding strategy change or a massive bid change from like 20 cents to 60 cents or something you can do it occasionally if it's like totally obvious that your change is, will most likely have a positive impact but if you are insecure or if that's just like um, a small change trying to get a slightly higher ROAS or something rather give it a few more days to stabilize because that's definitely what will do it better for you the other extreme is the type of person that just does optimization sort of as a one-time project, like once a month or once every three weeks. Going through the account, oh yeah, here I could do something, there I could do something. That will not work either, of course. Now, the more you spend on Google, the more you have to optimize and you, the more often you have to look at things. If you spend $1,000 a day, such as many, many of my clients, then you have to check it regularly. You have to make changes. And the point is that you can also make changes often because most likely you have a whole bunch of campaigns. You have so many clicks that you can run tests much better and it's fatal to not do that. But even if you have like small budgets, many of my clients just spent 30, 50, 70, 80 bucks a day, for example, even then you can check and see are products not working, are campaigns not working, are devices not working, or something completely different. There are so many things in the account that can be messed up. You know, I could make a list of 50 things easily um, that if you aren't aware of that and if you are not optimizing regularly, having a routine, for example, you will miss out on a ton of sales. So definitely find a good healthy middle ground here. In the beginning, you can easily check it out like every day and see what's going on. Three, once every two or three days is also totally fine for most accounts but you know doing it three times a day or doing it once a month is definitely not the right amount right here number six on this list is balancing best practices with new experiments this is also huge among many many advertisers out there because most people follow a very similar pattern in what they're doing they have watched some videos maybe also mine and of course that makes sense and it makes sense to follow the best practices that i share across my youtube channel and across my uh, trainings and everything but the point is that you should always mix those best practices with new experiments and strategies and everything that you are trying out by yourself right so every situation is different your business is different uh, all my clients have different businesses, everything is different and it makes sense to follow best practices in many cases. There are some things that I can guarantee will do better. There, I can guarantee that it makes sense to test search and shopping in 90% of the cases at least. I can guarantee that using negative keywords makes sense, right? But there is always something that works better in your business than in any, anyone else's business and it always makes sense to try entirely new things. Maybe you have an idea for a campaign or for a uh, method or a strategy that I never have thought of, right? And that's something that you have to balance. Whenever I see new accounts, first of all, I have like a routine of things that I want to get done in the first one, two, three hours, whatever it is. And I do all these things step by step and they typically have a pretty positive impact on that business. But then, or sometimes if these things are already implemented, which is pretty rare, then I start thinking, okay, what are entirely new strategies and tactics that I could apply here? What are things that, you know, this this person has never seen before? What are things that maybe also I have never tried before, but based on that business and based on my experience and the millions of dollars I've spent, I might think, hey, this could work. This might be something useful. And I have so, so, so many cases where those experiments that are not best practices worked out super well. And nobody would have thought that they generate like five or six figures in additional monthly revenue. So balance those things, balance best practices with new experiments. Don't always follow a certain video or follow one method. Don't try to reinvent the wheel every single time you launch a campaign. Find the balance. This will make sure that you will have the best possible um, potential in your account at any given time. And now we come to the last point, number seven, and this is a little bit different from the perspective than any of the stuff we have done before, because this is expanding your business as a whole. 
sounds pretty strange, sounds a little, you know, yeah, easy in theory, but let me explain. If you have a niche store, for example, selling one specific type of product, maybe like boots for women or scarves or something like that or, or anything really, right? And you have campaigns that are doing very well in a very specific space or for a very specific product, you can scale most businesses out there to high five figures or even six figures or even seven figures in many cases if your audience is big enough in the US, for example. But if you have something that is working exceptionally well, rather than trying to squeeze out more money out of a single ad campaign or by adding a new one, you could also try to expand your business by selling something similar or adding a new category to your page or adding a new sort of style to your catalog or something like that. Because you know that something like that is working on Google right now, maybe something very similar might add another 20, 50, 100, $300,000 a month in sales to your business. Sure, this should be sort of the last step, right? Once everything is maximized, once your Google Ads are in awesome shape, once you have tried to scale it, once you have applied a whole lot of strategies and methods. But if you feel like you squeezed out every little bit of, of your account, then it makes sense to expand your business. Maybe only because of Google, because let's say that um, it doesn't make sense to expand your catalog in the physical world or with Facebook, but with Google, it might be very, very useful. So if you tried all these things, they didn't, you know, um, scale your business to 200,000 or maybe even just to 80,000. Think about how could you expand your inventory, your catalog, your offering, your whatever it is to make more sales. Sounds a little, you know, unrealistic maybe in some case, but you will notice, especially if you drop ship or especially if you can like stack a whole lot of products in your store, that this is a very, very good way of expanding your reach and your scale and everything if you have done all the other things before. All right, these were seven super, super important points right here. And I want you to put a comment below here and tell me what you think is the point here that has the biggest or will have the biggest impact in your business because you didn't apply it before. Like, is there something that stood out for you? Is there something that you are missing because you probably scaled uh, um, beyond 100K already and there is one massive thing that helped you get there? Would be super interesting to know. And if you want to work directly with me, if you want, to, if you want me to help you scale your business massively with Google Ads, with performance marketing with Google, then check the link in the description. Maybe we will talk on the phone in a couple of days already and I can tell you exactly what you have to do and then maybe even work directly with me to take things to a whole new level, taking out the guesswork. Check the link in the description if this sounds interesting for you. With this being said, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more Google Ads and e-commerce content like this. And yeah, I hope the weather over there is as good as it is, as it is here right now. I hope that soon we can also go out again and not just sit here and look at the weather. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Looking forward to see you next time again. And with this being said, have a good one and bye-bye.